Hi, welcome you again. I'm Sabir Ahmed. Uh, today I'm gonna teach you about spatial analysis. That means how you can analyze uh, your data, especially. Uh, in this lecture, we will cover uh, three or four topics: interpolation, contour, surface analysis. So, at first, we will look over what is interpolation and how you, uh, why you, we will use this and how we will use this. Then we will use contour. Uh, what is this and I will explain this later while I will teach you about that and then how we can analyze a surface okay the interpolation interpolation the term interpolation may be new to you but it is very helpful for analyzing a special data uh, if you are if, if you from if you are from mathematics department then you do have an idea about that but if you are not from mathematics department don't worry about that uh, i will try to make you understand i hope you will understand okay so what is interpolation so from the name it is very clear that uh, you will uh, interpolate that means if you have two points then you will predict some values in between those two points right so this is called this is called the pollution between that two points okay so formal if we go to the formal definition to the interpolation then what you'll see interpolation is a procedure that means a mathematical procedure to predict values in places where sample points lack okay i'm gonna make you understand this definition uh, using a figure okay for example this is a point data this is a point data surface this is surface this is another surface okay this is interpolated surface this is point surface okay so for example if you look over this area for example there are several points but uh, in between this policy we, we do not know what is the value of this otherwise we do not know uh, this area's values right this area's values but using the interpolation technique we can get that values for example if we look over the interpolated technique then we will see that we have all the values here we have all the values here and we didn't have that we, we didn't have this portion's values this way but in the interpolation surface we do have all the values right and here we didn't have any values but here we do have values so this is the interpolation technique that we, interpolation mathematical and mathematical technique that we will use uh, for analyzing a surface so in which case we are going to use this interpolation technique especially we are interested in uh, who are working in hydrogeology uh, who plots frequently the water level or uh, to understand the extension of um, uh, borehole location and interpolation technique is very helpful to understand uh, to make a representation of the gravity this is the gravity data of bangladesh so i have represented this here and, and if you're from environmental analyst then you can do that and you can analyze you can analyze uh, surface using interpolation technique very easily it is really really very helpful Moreover, it is really helpful for your research paper representation because you cannot represent this. But otherwise, if you represent this and you can make a figure with this, then definitely it makes more better sound than this, right? <clears throat> okay. So there are different techniques of interpolation method. As it is a mathematical method, there are different techniques. So we are gonna uh, we are gonna see what are those techniques and how we do that. Okay. Okay, before going, uh, before going to the methods, uh, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you some other interpolation procedures. For example, uh, this is interpolated rainfalls are are represented by a box. For example, it's one and two, and we, we do not know the values in between this one and two. So we can easily find it out uh, using the interpolation techniques. So interpolation is a procedure used to predict cell values for locations that lack sample points so how we can uh, how we can find out these values interpolation technique can do that okay using the neighboring points if we do have these points these points these are the neighboring points right so we can do that easily so there are different techniques of you know, okay i've got these documents from uh, by collins charles uh, esr education service 
so you can get it from from internet as well so there are different the methods of surface representation yeah we have already said that we can uh, make a surface using points even we can um, represent a surface uh, using the contours for example uh, these are the contour lines what is the contour lines contour line is nothing but representing a iso lines that means this line represents all the values same this line represent values having equal having equal values for example if this is uh, the elevation elevational map then this line represents for example this is the 500 meter elevation then this line represents all 500 line elevation and for example if this line is 200 elevation then uh, it represents the 200 uh, points all the here then uh, other 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 methods also teens uh, grids uh, we are not interested about the teens and grids because in theory analyst we will learn, we will discuss more about teens and grids okay so at this moment we are interested about different types of uh, uh, interpolating surfaces okay so there are different types of interpolating techniques uh, for example the idw clinging sp line <coughs> point interpolation natural neighbor to put to raster and there are laws and trend you can analyze the trend that. okay so uh, step by step we will at first uh, understand what is idw idw uh, inverse distance weight okay idw function should be used when set of points in dense points in is dense uh, enough to capture extent of local surface variation needed for analysis. The IDW determines the cell values using a linear weighted combination set of sample points. The weight assigned is function for the distance point. The greater distance and less the influence the cell has the points. And I, I'm sure you can understand all of that. And um, so this is very important for the IDW. So I, when you will use IDW, you will use IDW when there is a dense points that means uh, if I go to my slide then for example this this area has a very dense densely uh, populated points right so for this and if you want a minute uh, details we minute minute analysis then we can use uh, IDW because it says when the set of points is dense enough to capture the extent of local surface variation so if you want or find out the local surface variation where the points are dense enough then we can use this IDW <coughs> method okay the end the point is spline spline is very important especially if you want some smooth results uh, spline estimates values using mathematical function that minimize the overall surface curvature it minimizes the surface curvature for example uh, you'll see there are lots of surface curvatures here uh, lots of, but it minimizes here you will not find you will not find this surface curvature here you will not find any it is smooth so con the result is a smooth surface that passes exactly through the input points conceptually yeah, it is like bending a sheet of rubber so that it passes through the points while minimizing the total curvature of the surface so, so if you want a smooth surface especially it is very important uh, if you um, uh, want uh, these or value analysis that you can do that not only these and values and values uh i've got some noise i'm sorry my mom is working over there okay uh so its plan is like that so you it can predict creation and values in the data and the best methods representing smoothly varying surface phenomena and temperature a varying surfaces of phenomena temperature that is Two variations of spline: regular, regularized, and tension. A regularized spline incorporates the first derivative. You know, you understand dt by uh, dx or dx by dt, whatever it is. A second derivative rate of change is in slope d squared dx by dt squared. And third derivative rate of change in the one derivative into the minimization calculus. Although tension spline uses only the first and second derivatives. It includes more points in its length. But see, you understand, you understand the objective of this, right? So, according to your objective, you can use the method. 
another very powerful and important method is screening method. A powerful statistical interpolation method used for diverse applications such as health science, geochemistry, pollution modeling. Screening assumes the distance or direction between sample points reflects a spatial correlation that can be used to explain variation in a surface. Okay, clinging is the most appropriate when a spatially correlated distance or directional bias in the data is known and is often used for application in soil and geology. <coughs> so there are lots of techniques that are here, so you can understand. For example, this is the clinging, and and what is the or, and this, this is the same data are represented by the clinging interpolation method and the scaling interpolation method. So if you compare these, then what you will see. This is very smooth. This is very, uh, this cleaning method have different curvatures, right? So for larger scale data, we do generally use cleaning method. For for small scale data, we do use spline. And uh, if you want smooth and non-variational data or surface, then we can use spline data. On the other hand, uh, for densely points, uh, we, if you want to understand the local variation uh, of a data, then we can use the IDW. Uh, generally, we do use IDW clinging and explain method. However, you can also understand you can also the point point interpret, okay? Point interpret, na natural neighbor, and topo to raster, something like that. Okay. So these are the graph, and from where you can understand um, the different uh, different methods uh, get value interpolation. For example, how they can vary. So uh, so from this graph, it is very assumed that we'll we'll get different types of surface if we use different methods, right? So we'll get different types of error in different types of method, right? So uh, don't think that you are going to do 100% accurate thing, because at first I have said that we are predicting values in between two or more values, right? So, if you predict some values, definitely there must be an error. So, you must have to care those errors. Uh, you must have to um, analyze those errors as well. Okay. So, these are the things uh, of interpolation technique. Okay. So, now I am going to RGS 10 uh, to understand the interpolation technique. Okay. So, for, uh, this is the RGS. For your convenience, I've made some surface interpol interpolated surface from some points. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. I have data of here. So what I have this? So this is the contour data of my contour data of gravity anomaly of Bangladesh, North West Bangladesh. Here. So what does this line mean? This does this does mean this line represents a same value. Okay. So uh, for interpolation, what I've said, we want to predict uh, uh, <coughs> unknown sample values, right? So for interpolation, we have to use point, right? But we do have line data. So how we can convert this line data into point data? So that is easy technique. We can do that. That is a uh, tool from the data management tools. If you go to the feature then we can go to the feature vertex to point so from these tools uh, we can convert this line data into a point data so you cannot use the line data for interpolation technique but you have to use the point data okay i i have converted so point type all so that it need start and both ends and angle so you can use you know, however you want okay but we do generally use all point type so, so, so that we can get all the points of line, not from start, not from middle, not from uh, end, something like that. Okay. Okay, and we have got the same. We have got the points. For example, if you see that uh, points here, we have got the points from the line. So, using this point data, uh, I can interpolate inter interpolate this surface. For example. Uh, using this point data, I have interpolated this sp line. So, so these are the point data, and from the point data, I have got a surface, and I have also got clinging here, and this is the IDW. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you how uh, I've used the three different methods, spline, clinging, and DW. So this is the spline method, right? So I'm going to show you how this how this methods, this means spline, clinging, and IDW varies from each other. For example, if I take this off, then you will see a great variation, right? And I'm going to show the variation between spline and clinging. So you are you're seeing the spline methods. For example, if you look here, then what you will see? There's a great variation, color variation as well, right? You can see the smooth variation. Um, the, the, these are the clinging method, so more curvatures here, and with spline methods, you'll see more smooth than this, right? Okay, so if we use the clinging and IDW variation, then you'll see also the same thing. There are lots of variation. So depending upon your purpose, you can use any of the methods or use all of the methods and, to, and then uh, analyze the difference between this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show how to make an interpreted surface. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I, I had to go. Okay. So um, we have seen the difference between the different methods of interpolation techniques. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how we can make a, a different interpolated surface. Okay. So you have to go to catalog. Then we have to go to the spatial analyst because uh, previous lecture is called spatial analysis. Okay, so from the spatial analyst tool, you have to go to the interpolation method. Interpolation, so there are different interpolation techniques IDW, clinging, natural neighbor, spline, uh, spline barriers, topo raster, train, or something like different things. Okay, IDW. So, input features uh, there are two types of features. Number one line and point. Let's see which features are in left by here. Yeah, only point data. So GP is the point data, right? So in interpolation technique, you have to use only the point data to interpolate those. Okay, so you have to use the interpolation technique. So Z value. So in which value you are going to interpolate? It may be an elevation. It may be a depth. It may be the temperature variation. It may be the any kind of variation that you want. Here, uh, I am mm, using the Bouguer gravity anomaly. That means the gravity variation of this region. How gravity varies in this region. Okay. So you do not have to change this. These are automatically done. An output raster, so you can change your output. So I have already made uh, another IDW. Okay, IDW. Uh, you don't <laughs> this uh, already taken ID W one okay W one. So I've already uh, I've already done this method. So if you uh, you, you don't have to change all other things, uh, there's some variables, search radius, peaks, or uh, something like this, number of points. So if this is not variable, then you can do that. If variable, then for example, uh, what is the variable search radius variable? For example, if you want uh, a prediction if you want a prediction of, of a region then it don't uh, it will <coughs> take counts uh, fixed number of points okay so according to your definition right distance in this distance it, it will count only it will never go beyond this but if you use the variable then it will be more perfect okay if you press okay then you will get um, IDW interpolation technique yeah so I've got this IDW interpolation IDW map of this. Okay, so in similar way, you can do that clinging, spline, natural neighbors. Okay, so what you can do, there are huge research options here. Okay, if you're from mathematics or if you're from non mathematics, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, what you can do, you can find out the different um, interpolation techniques, you can use different interpolation techniques and you can uh, find out the errors of different interpolation techniques uh, for a particular region. So you can analyze for this research purpose, we have got this, this, this errors for this, this method. Okay, so for this kind of analysis, we can use this method and this method seems very well for this, mm, for this analysis and this method doesn't seem. Okay, so 
So this is really very important for you to understand the process. Okay. So we have uh, we are we are already end of our interpolation technique. Okay. So we can. So I I'm sure you you understand this process. Okay. We are switching to another tool to surface. This is the surface, right? So if you want to analyze this surface, how this surface or how the gravity values of this region varies, right? So we can we can do that using the surface tools. There are several tools under the surface. Aspect, contour, control list, contour with barriers, curvature, cut hill, hill shade, slope. And I'll make you understand step by step. So what is aspect? Uh, aspect is nothing. From the aspect, uh, we can easily understand. It means the direction. That means uh, this, this is an anomaly. This is an anomalous value, right? So how the values uh, are directed in this region? Okay, contour. We can make a contour. That means the iso lines representing the same value. The contour list curvature. So how the anomalous are carved here? Hill shape three-dimensional representation of the hill slope so we can understand the, how the mm, values uh, are sloping here what is the slope of this region right so we can easily do that okay I'm gonna take some break right now and I'll come back soon okay welcome again so uh, we are here okay aspect contour uh, Control list slope something something like that so we can easily so we'll see the aspect uh, aspect of uh, sp line clinging and idw okay so how aspect will vary and we can see that right now so if we find out the aspect of sp line then okay let's see how we can do that uh, say sp aspect SP line okay then we can do that uh, aspect ah we can we are getting this the aspect of the SP line so we, we, we got the flat not not this is so how the anomalies of this region varies with direction then if we find out this we can use the aspect okay so this aspect so if you want to uh, find out the contour, then okay, let's see SP line to interest the contour. So contour interval. So what is the variation? The highest value is uh, 128 and the lowest value is minus 177. So what would be the contour? Where <coughs> contour interval? So contour interval. Let's say 10. It means that uh, we'll get the lines uh, interval about 10 okay 10 contour interval so th this is the contour so contour will be the shape field not the raster file okay that that's why it's called feature class okay contour so if we uh, yes okay then what we will see yep we have got the contour lines for example this right so this value represents the value and this will represent the value and having interval of 10 this this line and this line represent 10 okay so these are the contour lines so for example here the contour values are very prominent and can you please tell me why because the data variations are here is very good here so you can do that here uh, these are Control value, so you understand what is the control value? Okay. Catalog, control value, curvature, slope. You can also find out the slope. Slope of the spline, for example, spline output. Uh, this is the slope. Yes, slope. Slope here. So, what be the unit? So, percent rise or degree. So, we put degree. Let's see how slow that means how it varies yeah it varies like this way so we can now we can easily, we can easily do that uh, 
is the con slope values of that of this region. So how the slope of this surface varies. So you can do that easily. Yes. Okay, you can you can do that easily. Contour yes. value surface or something like that. It's very very important. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So this is the slope of this region. How can how gravity uh, of this region is varying? What is the slope of this? So uh, we see uh, slope of this region is very negligible in, in, in uh, especially uh, in green area. So we didn't find any slope. So here, especially in this portion, uh, we, we found that. This thing. So why we do use slope? We do use slope to understand the where the slope is maximum, and now we can understand why the slope is maximum. So this is the clue. This understand. So in this area, slope is more or less very good, much more than this area, right? So so this is very interesting. Why the slope? That means the why the variation of this mm, is variation is distinct and is mass. So this can be a clue. This can be a way to go further analysis. For further analysis, right? So, for example, this. Okay. So this is the slope, and and this way you can do hill shade and contour list or something like that. So, uh, this is very basic thing of uh, spatial analysis. So I hope you have understood what I have tried to make you understand. <laughs> okay so thank you very much for being with us I hope uh, you understood and, and uh, write comments if you do not understand anything and write in Facebook uh, if you don't understand thank you very much for being uh, with us and I hope you we, we will see you in next video